So, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Uh, in this video, we'll be talking about uh, laboratory determination of liquid limit through Cassegrain method. So, how we basically determine the liquid limit from uh, Cassegrain method in the laboratory. So, that is what we'll learn. Uh, so, uh, before uh, going towards the calculation phase, we'll try to learn two to three things which are very important regarding this test. So, first one, some key points. Uh, the key point is liquid limit is defined as moisture content corresponding to 25 number of blows, but why only 25 number of blows? Before going to answer this uh, key point, uh, I'll uh, let me uh, let me uh, show you a graph that how we basically determine the liquid limit. So this is the end result uh, of the test. We have a number of blows along x-axis, moisture content along the y-axis, then against 25 number of blows, the moisture content is referred to as liquid limit. So that is, uh, this is how we determine the liquid limits. But the question remains the same. Why against 25 number of blows? The reason is that the uh, research or literature says that at liquid limit, at liquid limit, every soil has a shear strength equal to 1.7 kPa or 25 gram per centimeter square. So here the concept used by Cassegrain is that when we apply the number of blows, if we apply one single blow, it applies one gram per centimeter square shear stress. So it means when uh, 25 number of blows are applied, then shear strength of the soil uh, our shear stress induced in the soil is 1.7 kp or 25 gram per centimeter square. So at that point, shear strength of the soil is basically uh, 25 gram per centimeter square or you can say 1.7 kp. So that is why, that is why Cassegrande termed uh, liquid limit, uh, the moisture content against 25 number of blows. So that was very important to understand the logic the next point of discussion is that we determine liquid limit uh, on the material that is passing sieve number 40 but the one of the important use of liquid limit is that we use it to classify fine type of soil while the fine type of soil according to uscs system is those particles uh, those particles which are passing sieve number 200 now the point of uh, contradiction is that the liquid limit uh, that is determined on sieve number 40 is being used to classify the particles that are passing sieve number 200. So it uh, isn't it uh, contradictory? Yes, exactly. The my point is that liquid limit should be determined on uh, material that is passing sieve number 200. The next thing I, uh, if you recall from consolidation test, consolidation is, uh, is determined on clay layer. And uh, one of the important parameters is coefficient of compre uh, compression index. So compression index uh, and the correlation is that 0 0.009 into liquid limit minus 10. Here liquid limit is used that is uh, determined on same number 40 part, uh, particle, uh, particles that are containing most probably coarse particles as well. So why we use this? So the reason uh, when I went uh, to study the literature, I found that one of the reason uh, described was that uh, the concept of fines passing sieve number 200 came uh, in 1948 uh, by the USCS system. USCS system basically defined sieve number 200 passing material as fines, but liquid limit determined by Casa Grande, uh, that, uh, that concept was uh, published in 1932. So one of the reason is described in the literature that is not basically uh, the pure reason. On the technically, uh, the one of the uh, researchers told me that uh, the reason could be that in the field you can find pure fine soil. There is some mixture of uh, coarse particles, so that is why Cassegrain considered that the soil should be intermediate of fines. So, 
uh, here is one of the reason but my point is technically uh, we should determine the liquid limit on passing seam number 200 material i am personally doing some research on this topic and i found some results as well there is some uh, little bit research on this topic as well but i am trying to develop some correlations so this is the point of contradiction so let's try to understand how we basically determine the liquid limit from laboratory test so these are the observations we performed the test we found out uh, the number of blows 34 in the first trial 23 in the second trial and 12 in the third trial so uh, as per the ranges so mass of the container is 32.11 gram and this uh, mass of wet soil plus container and mass of dry soil plus container we basically uh, uh, perform one trial we take wet soil at that uh, uh, 34 blows so we put it in the oven and we obtain the oven dry soil after 24 hours there is a reason behind uh, why we take uh, or why we dry soil for 24 hours so in the coming videos we'll discuss this point as well so anyhow these are the values we'll try to understand how we basically determine the liquid limit let's go to the excel sheet so this uh, in the excel sheet i have put all these values now what we have to determine is basically moisture content so the formula of uh, moisture content is that it is the ratio of weight of water to the weight of soil solids into 100 so firstly i'll finding out the weight of dry soil or uh, weight of uh, water you can say so in camps that will be ww we can say that it is in camps so thank you so uh, if i uh, subtract weight of wet soil weight of wet soil plus container you can say from weight of dry soil plus container we'll get weight of water basically so what i do is weight of wet soil subtract weight of dry soil i'll get the weight of water similarly i'll apply the same formula and we'll get weight of water for the third trial as it is. so this is how i found out weight of water now i have to find out weight of dry soil weight of dry soil basically it is not container weight of dry soil so ws uh, look if i subtract weight of dry soil plus container if i subtract weight of container only then what i'll get weight of dry soil so i'll do select this one subtract weight of container similarly I'll apply this formula with a dry soil minus weight of container yes weight of dry soil minus weight of container yes so uh, I have found out weight of dry soil and weight of uh, water as well now I'll find the moisture content in percentages yes so this is basically weight of water divided by weight of solids into 100 so that is how we determine basically the moisture content so the formula i'll apply here is that weight of uh, water divided by weight of solids into 100 so this is how I'll obtain the moisture content for the first trial and same procedure will be adopted for the second trial. So yes. Second trial and same procedure for the third trial. This one select this one close the bracket multiply by 100 and here is how i have obtained two things which are uh, required to plot the graph what uh, moisture content and corresponding number of blows so now i'll go to insert 
and yes we'll select this graph now right click select data now we'll remove this one we'll have to add the new one along x-axis you uh, as we know that there is a uh, moisture content uh, along the x-axis there are number of blows so i'll select this one okay for y-axis along y-axis there is moisture content so that is why i will select this one okay select okay now uh, i will go to here and will generate a trend line straight trend line so here you can see that uh, now we have to find out the moisture content against 25 number of lows so what i'll do is uh, we'll draw a line against 25 number of lows then an other line corresponding to this line i will draw this thing to find out the moisture content against 25 number of lows so here you can see it's almost uh, 22 liquid limit comes out to be 22 so now we will verify our result from a software caster that is used for uh, laboratory test results and the field test results as well that is a very useful software i use basically so i'll open this software we'll go to caster software lab test i'll go to liquid limit and firstly i will uh, put the data number of blows here you can see for observation well uh, number of blows for first trial are 34 then for second 23 for third 12 and for others zero we'll keep it as zero no empty can weight from the file we can see the empty can weight is 32.1 i'll copy this data over here simply control v same control c and i will put the same data here now for the third trial as it is empty can wait control c we'll paste the data over here the rest of the data will be zero okay now can plus wet soil again i'll copy the data can plus wet soil yes this one control v so we'll select this one we'll go to this column i'll put the data over here and for the last one control c this is just to verify the results from a software no the last one can plus dry size i'll put the data from here can plus dry size i'll control c we'll put over here for the next file can plus dry size will be copied to here and for the last reading Control C Control V rest of the values are zero. So now the observations are and OK. This is for the second observation. We don't need this, so just click OK. Uh, no other data. So here you can provide the uh, other data, borehole number, depth, etc. In the meantime, we are not discussing these things, so I'll click OK, OK for second time, just plot, click plot and you can see here, here is the water content and the number of blows and in the caster the value is 22.1, so the value is verified, so it means uh, we can find out liquid limit uh, through Cassegrande method, so I hope you like the video, if you like the video, please subscribe uh, to watch more videos.